So uh, have you learned new things? So I think that you are ready for the exam. Uh, have you been told that there is going to be an exam at the end? So I need some leftovers of, of focus, if you have some. Um, I'm teaching C++, and um, over the years are recognized that in the exam it is better to ask questions on reading code and not on writing code. I discussed that in my talk previously today. So you're going to read 20 lines of C++ code, get focused, and then after the 20 lines, I would ask you some multiple choice questions, okay? So get ready, 20 lines, here it is. Now, uh, the students get the code um, beforehand. Uh, I provide some code samples before the exam, and I'm telling them that one of the samples or a few of the samples would appear in the exam. So they get prepared, but you are experts. You don't need that. <laughs> it's, all, it's almost all value semantics. I know that I have the vector there by reference, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah that's, cor that's correct. Maybe I should use val here and, and, and pass by value. Eventually it is all here in a way, value semantics. Anyhow, uh, uh, do you see what we try to achieve here? We're trying to fill a bucket, right? Okay. Yeah, uh, some comments are missing. I think that we could divide that into some functions, right? But still, it is 20 lines of code, and the questions would not be too hard. Okay, I guess you are at line eight by now. <laughs> Seven is good. So, if you are reaching 20, so just before before we start, before we go to the question to the questions, what is the return value? Well, we want to answer the question whether you can fill the big bucket with the small buckets and the pair holds first the question of whether you can do that, yes or no, a Boolean. And then if you can do, if the Boolean is true, then a mapping of the buckets that are you using and how many times are you going to use each bucket, right? Okay, I think that you are ready for the questions. Now, you take your score, so I would not check. This is the first one. What will be printed if we call can fill with 12 and 4 and print the first? Yeah, you, you can shout. Hey. Okay, this was a quite easy one. Yeah, it is true. You can fill, I think, uh, 12 with 3 times 4. Okay, are you ready for the next one? Okay, here comes the next one. Did we have any um, expect expectations regarding the input of the function, I mean the vector of the small buckets? 
Yeah, on line four, Tony says, uh, that it is sorted. We check there whether we can fill the big bucket with the last one. And if we cannot, it means that, oh, we have a problem. And here, can we fill the 12 with the last one? I mean, would we go out in line four, or maybe we would go into the recursion in a way because mm, nine, 12. Suppose that the last one, it is not sorted, and, and we do expect here some sorting, right? In a way, at line four, that's correct. Uh, but nine is still less than 12. Would, be able, would the small buckets be able to fill the big bucket if they are not sorted for some reason, they should have been. So again, this is the code, and the question is, with these buckets, which are not sorted accidentally. Okay, you have to run the recursion uh, um, and debug it uh, like, you know, in your head. And the answer is, the answer is false because eventually it would try with a five because nine is smaller than 12. And then it would try with five, um, but then the rest is smaller than nine. Okay, so it would go out with a, uh, it should go into the function sorted. Okay, are you, are you ready for the last question? You, you can still earn points. How many times can fill is called with this input, which is sorted now? Uh, maybe you need to see the code. Okay, bake. The, uh, nine, seven, five, these are the small buckets, and this is the code. How many times can fill would be called, uh, including the first call, I, I mean at least once it is called. My students occasionally ask me, why should I answer such questions? I mean, I can run the code, and I, 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 I can debug it. And I believe that, yeah, but you, you would not do that for any piece of code. I mean, you should have the ability to read code and understand what happens there. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether this kind of code, but yeah, I think that even 20 lines of recursion. So, if you have uh, uh, some kind of an answer, how many times would we call this function? I get a three here, which means B. Any D, any A, any C? Okay, I, I would let you off, and the answer is C four times. Um, thank you very much. Come take my exams if you want. Thank you.